Most parents would be upset to hear their child had been part of a playground scuffle. But most parents aren't like Ed Barrientos, who it seems will stop at nothing to make sure his 10-year-old daughter is a champion in cage fighting, one of the world's toughest sports. And as ABC's David Wright found, Mr. Barrientos is not alone. Number. Focus, 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 focus. Ten-year-old Nadia Barrientos is preparing to defend her title. The faster you go in there and start striking, the faster you're going to finish. They call her the beast. That's her dad at the side of her treadmill. How bad do you want that championship belt? Really bad. Really bad? As tough as any drill sergeant. I was in the military, and I used to push people to the limit. And some people would just quit on me because I was pushing them too hard. This is the boy I never had. Nadia's nemesis is Cheyenne Bowman. So that's her over there? Yeah. Also 10 years old, known as the bulldozer. The bulldozer? Is that what you do? You knock him down? Sometimes. Two tiny gladiators about to fight it out, not in a ring, but a cage. They fought each other three times before. She's won me once and I won her twice. So she's beaten you once and you've beaten her once. Twice. Twice. Today, Cheyenne is hoping to take the title. Cheyenne and Nadia aren't even the youngest fighters here. At this competition in San Diego, there are kids as young as five cage fighting as their parents cheer them on. What did you think when you saw this? I'm shocked. Andy Foster is executive officer of the California State Athletic Commission. He oversees all fighting sports in the Golden State. After watching video from a similar tournament, in which a kid accidentally took a blow to the head, he stopped that tournament. He says kids have no business being cage fighters. And you come at this from a position of knowledge. You're familiar with this sport. That's correct. I mean, I was a professional mixed martial artist, an amateur boxer. I feel like I'm well versed in the in martial arts and I don't believe in what I saw. What is it you worry about? I worry about the safety of the children. About six million American boys and girls practice one form or another learning valuable lessons of self-discipline and physical fitness. I'm okay with them practicing with their coaches, but it's when they step into a competitive area and they use full contact blows to damage the other person. That's how they win. It becomes a problem. But the inspiration these days isn't the Karate Kid. It's contests like the Ultimate Fighting Championships. MMA video games are hugely popular with kids. So it's probably only natural kids would want to get into the ring for real. You know, soccer is a nice, safe sport. <laughs> so is Little League. <laughs> Why'd you choose this? So we've tried that. It's, it's fun. Girls not only fight each other, they sometimes fight boys. Is it a fairly common thing for girls to do these days? It's, it's getting bigger and bigger. And how do the boys feel about that, getting their butts kicked by girls? Some of these kids, fighting is almost a secret identity. Ten-year-old Krista Aquino says her classmates have little idea what she can do. They're not into the things that I like. She doesn't have school friends. She hangs out with the gym people more. She gets along with them much better. The gym is her haven. She spends three to four hours a day there, practicing how to take someone down. We showed Andy Foster a video of Krista fighting. He was impressed and also horrified. These kids are 10 years old. She's a tough little kid, She's huh? She's highly skilled. I mean, her grappling is very good. But see, he's reestablished the guard at this point. I'm not comfortable with this. And it's a boy versus a girl. At some point, we will have a serious injury. Fight moms like Lindsey Bean, whose kids are devoting their blood, sweat, and tears to this sport, believe he's wrong. Maybe you should open up your experiences more. We had a beautiful event here just a few weeks ago. No children injured. They all left with smiles on their faces, medals around their necks, and they had a great time. Someone is going, some child is going to be injured in this activity. Foster told her gyms and event organizers need to get the message to cease and desist with these kinds of tournaments. Physicians say he's right. 
We talked to sports medicine doctors at the Scripps Clinic. Pediatrician Paul Stricker says he sees lots of MMA injuries. When I ask these kids if they've ever had a concussion or been knocked out, the answer is almost always no. If I ask them, have you ever been kind of dazed or foggy or have a headache after you've competed, the answer is almost always yes. But they may have had a concussion without even knowing it? Well, they may have had sub-concussive trauma. So you wouldn't let your kids do this? I would not. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. So how is it that these tournaments continue to take place in California? It's time to shake up the world! Even after the Athletic Commission has stopped similar events. To be honest, he probably doesn't know about it. Really? The promoter insists he wasn't aware of the commission's ruling until it was too late to cancel this one. He never received a cease and desist order, and he insists that this is light contact MMA, not full contact. Blows to the head are off limits. He says if they do happen accidentally, as several did while our cameras were rolling, the refs are on it. The fight gets stopped. One point red for an illegal strike to the face. To me, it's not full contact MMA. Ask all these parents here that came here. Have five-year-old girls fighting. They train six days a week. And you're going to take away that because of your own views? Indeed, these parents fully support their kids. In Nadia Barrientos' case, her dad encourages her to be more aggressive. If you could take her down, take her down. You know how you always get in the Muay Thai clinch? Try to turn that into a guillotine. I can't. Shut up. Stop being such a pussy. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts. But these 10-year-old girls also drive themselves. And she was always like, I don't want to do cheer. I want to go join MMA. So it was just all her idea, and she pushed it. I don't think it's aggression for her. It's just more like an art for her. It's like a passion that she likes and she enjoys. As if there weren't enough pressure, Nadia has to lose five pounds to qualify for the weight class to fight with Cheyenne. She doesn't do anything too drastic. She'll eat salad. 90 and some change. Yay. The coaches keep them in check. Okay. Make sure if you need to cut your pounds, you cut your pounds now. Backstage on fight day, success. Nadia made the weight class. She got down to 88 pounds, losing nearly five pounds in two days. Time for the title fight between the beast and the bulldozer. Fight! And it's not looking good for Nadia. 33 seconds into the first round, it's all over. And for Nadia, the tears start to flow. The bulldozer, Cheyenne Bowman, takes the title. And the new girls, 90 pound champion in the blue pit, Cheyenne oh Nadia is crushed. Like almost every other kid that lost today, she weeps in the locker room. You okay? It hurts, huh? A tough lesson to absorb at age 10 but she's a tough girl. She'll be back. I'm David Wright for Nightline in Chula Vista, California.